Okay, let's talk about fastening laps. They are round discs, normally but not always made of metal, which you put onto your fasting machine to cut gemstones. They are charged with either diamonds or some kind of oxide, which allows them to basically scratch your gemstone rough. It's the same principle as using sandpaper to sand wood. You start with a rougher grit or micron level of diamond or oxide, and you progress through different laps using finer and finer grits of diamond or oxide on each facet of your gemstone, making finer and finer scratches until you eventually have a smooth or polished gemstone. There are still scratches there, but they can't be seen with the naked eye or with 10 times magnification, which is what a jeweler's loop is. Laps are what allows you to go to finer and finer polishing for your gemstone. Different types of gemstones can be polished with different types of oxides, such as cerium oxide or aluminum oxide, which I will cover later, but all gemstones can be polished with diamonds on a lap. This is my current collection of laps, and this is my lap tree. Uh, my lap tree is set up so that I have all my go-to laps within easy reach when I'm cutting. I have many more laps than a new cutter would need or want. Heck, I have more laps than I need. But I enjoy working with different laps from time to time. And sometimes when one lap just won't work on a particular facet or a gemstone I am cutting, I have other laps in my collection that I can switch to in order to deal with that one problem facet that comes up every so often. I do not, by a long shot, own every type of fastening lap on the market. There are many laps that I won't cover in this video just because I have no experience with them. If I don't mention a lap and it's one of your favorites, please tell us about it in the comments. Laps can run from a couple of dollars, in the case of this disposable ultra laps, up to many hundreds of dollars per lap for some of the matrix laps that are made by hand one at a time for you when you place an order. Laps can be made uh, to be used for just a couple of stones, again as the case with the ultra laps, or they can be made to last a lifetime as is the case with some of the sintered laps which have several millimeters of diamond embedded onto the lap. With sintered laps, as one layer of diamonds is worn away, the layer of diamonds below is exposed and you can continue to use the lap, if you're lucky, for a lifetime. As far as size, I only use the eight inch laps, but they also make six inch laps and my Ultratech has a half inch arbor hole. Some lap manufacturers have different options for other arbor sizes. Uh, six inch laps are naturally a little bit cheaper than eight inch laps. Uh, just make sure uh, if you order yours, you have the right arbor size for your machine. So let's start with those laps that I would recommend that you do not buy. Uh, 60 grit steel laps. I bought one when I was new. Uh, it causes subsurface damage to gemstones that you won't even know about until you're further along in fastening a gemstone. You'll start with an internally flawless piece of rough, and after using that 60 grit, you'll be cutting with one of your other grits, maybe even polishing, and all of a sudden, you'll notice a fracture. It wasn't there before. It shows up when you remove the gem material above that and that's what subsurface damage is. So for me, I try not to use anything below 300 grit to preform stones. But sometimes I do go down to a 200 grit. I bought the 60 grit, I don't use it, I do not recommend it. When I have tried it, it's caused subsurface damage. I don't recommend it. The 12,000, 1200 grit topper or finer at 3000 or so. Uh, these are inexpensive steel toppers. You can buy them on Etsy, eBay, a lot of places. Usually made in China and they have diamond embedded. Toppers are great, but at the rougher levels. 
they just don't run totally flat on your master lap. Not a problem with the coarser grits, but as you get to the 1200 or finer grits, it is a problem. And it'll cause your problems to getting your, getting your facets to line up and you'll have to spend a lot of extra time polishing the stone if you try to use these. So don't recommend 12K toppers or finer. Another bad buy I made when I was new was uh, this 3000 grit steel laps, uh, crystallite. The steel laps are great. Crystallite's a great product. I'm about to buy another Crystallite uh, 600 grit, but at the 3K level, they just don't seem to work. You're, you're much better off with a matrix lap or a metal lap, such as a bat lap, where you put uh, you know a 3K bat stick on it. The same goes with the 8,000 grit steel laps. They're just not they just don't work well. I wished, uh, wished I would have, but would not have bought them. So the final lap on my do not recommend uh, is also, unless you already have one, then it could be on my recommend list, and that's the ceramic lap. And so this is the start of my list of laps that I do recommend uh, for new fasteners especially beginners who are on the budget. And first off, you need a master lap. For any new cutter, I would recommend uh, a master a master lap, a master disc. And this is uh, what you need, it's an aluminum one. This is what you need to put your Ultratex or your ultra laps on, the thin, thin plastic laps, they need a backing. Or if you use any toppers, or if you use the delights, uh, the topper delights, any, any topper, you need a, a master lap under it to give you the backing uh, so it, it'll, it'll work on, on your lap. Uh, the aluminum ones, these are great. These are, again, it's kind of the standard. But uh, uh, when I first started cutting, I got talked into some bad advice of buying a, a ceramic lap. It was the rage kind of been overdone by technology, out, outdone by technology, but a ceramic, a ceramic lap, they're expensive. About half the cutters that use ceramic laps are able to use them, are able to get them to work properly, and uh, they love them. Uh, uh, the other half who have bought it, they, they're finicky, they might work sometimes, they don't work sometimes. Overall, I would not recommend buying a ceramic lap, they're very expensive, and like I said, only about half the people who buy them report good results with them. So I would not buy a ceramic lap. However, if you have one, they make the best master lap. Uh, the ceramic lap is the most flattest lap. It, does, it never warps. It doesn't get, have any give. So when you use a topper or your ultra laps on top of this, it gives you the flattest surface there is. When you put it on your machine to um, after you transfer your stones and you want to align the top to the bottom by finding a, a girdle point and, and aligning the top and the bottom of your, of your stone, you want a flat surface and this gives you the flattest surface uh, available in laps. So it's good for that. I would not recommend it. I would recommend uh, Aluminum Master Lap. Uh, a lot of people just use a regular lap as the master lap. Uh, I wouldn't. They, they have, you know, over time your regular laps, you you get soft spots in them. So and and they're not really for that. So I'd get a aluminum master lap. They're also in. Uh, they make them in in plastic, lucite, I guess. You can get them that way. Any any type of aluminum master lap you're going to need as a new cutter. So in addition to a master lap, and again, I don't recommend you buy a ceramic lap just so you have a very flat master lap, uh, but I do recommend the following laps. Uh, in, for toppers, uh, 200 series, I'm about 50-50 on needing a 200 series topper. I worry about uh, 
the subsurface damage, I've seen it, I've lived through it, I don't like it, so a little bit worried about the 200 series. However, I do occasionally use my 200 series toppers to preform gemstones. 300 series toppers, that's where I start uh, with my preforming of gemstones. And I would recommend toppers at the 300 series for new cutters who are on a budget. 600 uh, grit level, uh, the crystal light is what I would recommend. I'm currently using a topper because I've worn out uh, crystal lights and I recently wore out my last 600 crystal light. And uh, so I'll be buying another crystal light in the near future, but a topper works also. 1200, I would recommend at that level a crystal light. And I used one for many years. I wore out several of them. They're great, I loved them. Um, I recently upgraded to the Adamas 12M, which is a sintered lap. It's about a 1500 grit lap. It, not in the price range for someone just starting out in a but on the budget. So I'd start out with the 1200 crystal light. And I'm not sure the Adamas 12M is gonna be available uh, in the future. In any case, for a new cutter, the uh, 1200 Crystal Light is a great product. For the next lap, I would use uh, a 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap. Uh, this is my go-to for, for pre-polish. Uh, uh, 3K diamond is rough enough to move a facet if I need to. It's fine enough so that I can generally go straight from the 3K to polish. Um, that, that's a great lap to have. And the bat laps are reversible, so on the back side, you could use 8K diamond. A new cutter could get by without 8K diamond if your budget's really tight, but, and I, I don't use 8K all the time, but sometimes when I go to polish from a 3K, there's too much material to move between facets. So rather than go back to the 3K, I'll go to the 8K um, to close up the gap and make the facet even smoother. So uh, is the 8K critical for a new cutter? No, um, I'll leave that up to you. It, it, it's a good, a good lap. Uh, 14K diamond on a bat lap. It's a great lap. Uh, I use this sometimes. Uh, if I'm working with harder stones, I use it all the time. Um, if I'm working with softer stones, I may skip that and go straight to polish. But you're gonna need this lap if you're going to cut corundum, sapphire ruby, um, natural or synthetic. So I would recommend it. Backside of this lap, same as your first bat lap, uh, you could use 60K diamond on the back side and uh, you're going to probably want to polish your corundum uh, to 60K. There's other gemstones that you'll want to polish with diamond, so I would recommend the back side of that bat lap be used for the 60K uh, diamond. Tin lap. Um, I use my tin lap all the time. Uh, my favorite lap for uh, quartz, barrel, uh, anything with, uh, that I use with cerium oxide. Um, I recently bought a second tin lap just so I have, don't have to clean the, the one when I use cerium oxide when I switch to those stones that use aluminum oxide. So I would recommend one tin lap for new cutters for all oxides. You're gonna have to clean it when you go from cerium to uh, aluminum, not a big deal. But I would recommend a tin lap. Ultra laps, both the cerium oxide and aluminum oxide, I used those for years, that's what I started with. These are disposable laps that uh, you do need to put onto a master lap. And remember, the shiny side goes down onto the master lap. Uh, cerium oxide laps 
The cerium oxide labs come in two grades, the finer grade, which is a special milling of cerium, uh, is the one that I use. I learned it as blue spectra grade or spectrum ultralabs, but don't let the color blue cause you issues. There's at least one lapidary supply store that has blue cerium ultralabs as the rougher size, 1.5 micron, um, and the white for them is the finer cerium, the 0.5 micron. So in either case, you want the 0.5 micron. Don't just go by color. I don't have or use the chrome oxide, tin oxide ultralabs. Um, if any of you out there are using the chrome or tin oxide labs, uh, let us know in the comments which stones you use them for and the results. But I would recommend for new cutters, uh, go ahead and buy some cerium oxide and aluminum oxide ultralabs. So that's my list of recommended labs. I'm sure every cutter has their own list and they may not disagree. Uh, again, put your comments, your recommendations in the comment section. Thanks. Now, as far as compounds to put on laps, as far as diamond, diamond paste, diamond powder, I do have some small vials of diamond powder that I purchased long ago. I don't use them. I do use and recommend the uh, pandemonium diamond sticks from Gear Loose. Okay, these are some of the uh, some of the pandemonium sticks that I use with my laps. I have some other ones. Uh, ranging from the uh, 325 grit that I never use, the 1300 grit that I'll probably never use, the 3000 grit here that I always use as a go-to with my bat lap, the 8000 that I don't show, I use occasionally, the 13,000 or 14,000. The difference is this is the polycrystalline uh, finer diamond use occasionally the 60,000 uh, rarely occasionally rarely 100,000 rarely and the firewater is a new one he, he had John Rolfe had firewater but he just made it into one of these uh, pandemonium discs I never used his firewater product but I do know cutters who loved it love it um, so I've got it maybe I'll try it out sometime but these are the pandemonium. And the way you use them is you just, just like a kind of a chapstick, you just put it on the lap, rub it in with your finger, and use oil or water. I don't know that you need either with fire water, I have to read up on it, um, but use oil, in which case I use the snake oil. Except with the 60,000, I find that the Brother Zachary snake fluid works better than snake oil, um, but that's how I use these products. For the oxides, Gear Loose offers uh, bat sticks which look like big Crayola crayons. John currently has new premium grade cerium oxide 99 plus purity that I've not tried yet. Um, a regular cerium oxide that I do have, aluminum oxide that I have, chrome oxide and zirconium oxide sticks that I don't have. The cerium oxide and aluminum oxide bat sticks that I have are not my go-to oxide applicators, but I have them and use them a lot. I will eventually get around to testing out the uh, premium cerium oxide, the chrome and zirconium oxide sticks as well, and I'll let you know uh, what I think when I test them out. Uh, my go-to for oxides are the aluminum oxide and cerium oxide powder that I purchased long, long ago. I mix one teaspoon of oxide with uh, three ounces of water into a spray bottle, shake the bottle up, let it sit for 10 seconds so any large pieces of oxide drop to the bottom, and spray the oxide onto a slowly rotating lap. I use this with a slow water drip and respray as I need to. So. That's what I do, so I don't use the bat sticks uh, all the time. So there are other laps that I like and I have and I use on occasion. 
and that you may want to consider at some point. I wouldn't recommend them for a new cutter on a budget, but uh, I do recommend them. Well, let's start with a classic, the Raytech Nubon Laps. So this is the uh, Raytech uh, Nubon 1200. And when I first started fasting, this was the go-to 1200. This is what everybody was using. This was what I used for barrel, quartzes. I mean, it was, it was a great, it is a great 1200 grit lap. Leaves a finish that you can go straight to polish with. Like I said, it was the go-to disc. Raytec stopped making these laps, the Nubon laps, oh gosh, 15 years ago. There's been a lot of talk over the years. You'll hear fast, some pastors saying that Raytec's gonna start making them again. They never have. I suspect it's more of a big company and a little tiny market for this lap, so it just wasn't worth it to them. But uh, I did buy another one a long time ago. I put it away in my toolbox, so uh, I have a new one that I haven't really used. So again, I used it for everything. Every Every stone I cut, I used the uh, Ray Tech uh, 1200 grit on at some point in pre-polishing uh, that stone. Don't know why I haven't used them lately, but they've been in my toolbox. But these are a great lap. Like I said, they're not available now. If you can find the Nubon 1200, I think they make a 600 also that, that a lot of people rave about. If you find it on the secondary market, a used one in good condition, I'd say buy it. The blue for the 1200. I think the 600 is red, I think. I never did get one of those before they stopped making them. But that's the uh, Nubon 1200 lap. Next is the Copper Lap. Very popular in the past, and uh, several decades ago, it was kind of a, uh, the do-it-yourself generation, and they often made their own laps and often made them out of copper. Then for a long time, Copper Laps were just not available. Now they currently are available, um, so I bought one. Uh, do I recommend it uh, for a new cutter? No, but it's known as a good lap, so I'll keep it in my toolbox and I'll pull it out if I ever run into a problem stone or a problem facet. Uh, nothing else seems to be able to handle, and I will spend some time getting, uh, getting it broken in and getting uh, the feel of the copper lap. Okay, this is my new uh, solid uh, copper lap from John Rolfe over at uh, Gearloose. He says it's often preferred by traditionalists. Charged copper laps have been used for generations uh, with careful use and perhaps infrequent resurfacing, which John can do. Uh, they will last for decades. I'm not sure what that symbol has to do with it, but I don't know. Anyway, my new copper lap. Why did I buy a copper lap? I don't have a need right now for another lap. I think it's more that I'm a collector holic, and and for a long time in the past, solid copper laps were not available at all, and it could happen uh, that they'll suddenly disappear. Copper prices could go crazy, just like tin prices. Who knows? So I wanted one. That's why I have it. Do I, will I use it? I don't know when or where, but it's in my toolbox and if I need it, I've got it. I like it. And for now it'll stay unused. Next is lightning laps. Uh, overall, it's a good set of laps to have. Uh, I bought them all as toppers just to save uh, money and you need to use them with the master lap. Uh, they have saved the day for me more than a couple of times. Uh, the only grit that I passed on in the, uh, I guess, collection was the 600 grit, just because I prefer a steel lap with uh, diamond grit for the 600 and quarter grits, not a matrix. Once I, I, I had a sapphire that I just could not get uh, one facet to polish, 
no matter what I tried. So I pulled out my uh, 50K uh, lightning lap, ran it at a high speed, and uh, it polished uh, the sapphire no problem. So these are good laps to have when you have stones with problem stones. Also, if stones have a fracture in them or inclusions that break the surface, these are great laps because they don't create any slurry. Uh, with the bat laps and the uh, diamond, diamond powder, diamond grit, you create a kind of a black slurry. And uh, if the stone has uh, any crack that reaches the surface, that slurry can get sucked into the stone. You can eventually, you can get it out in different ways, but it's a lot of work. So laps like this, you don't need to worry about the slurry. So these are uh, good laps. Uh, I also have the uh, two aluminum oxide uh, uh, lightning laps and the cerium lap. Overall, they're good laps. Uh, they're just not currently my go-to laps. Uh, Hyper Edge Laps by R&D Consultants. Uh, I love this lap. Not sure why it's not one of my go-to laps uh, other than probably because it's an 8,000 grit, which I don't always use my 8,000 grit. A lot of times I go from 3K straight to polish. Um, so other than that, it, it would be my go-to, but it, that's the only reason probably that I'm not. I will say the Hyper Lap, Hyper Edge Lap, was the most expensive lap that I purchased. Uh, it's worth every penny, but I would have to save up uh, to buy the whole collection of Hyper Edge laps. Ed uh, makes these Hyper Edge laps one at a time as you order them. Um, so each one is individually created. And like I said, someday I'd, I'd love to buy other Hyper Edge laps. It just uh, may take a while. They come in the uh, following grits, uh, the 100 grit, the 250 grit, the 500 grit, 1K, 1500, 3K, 8K, 25K, 50K, 100K, and a 200K. So a lot of, uh, lot of options there. Uh, great lap, just not currently one of my go-to laps. Okay, so uh, I have several of the gear loose uh, uh, special laps. I don't have every gear loose lap that John Rolfe produces, so I can only speak to the laps that I have and the experiences I've had with them. The dark side is a good lap. It also saved the day for me several times. Uh, it can be used with oxides or diamond to polish. Personally, I, since I started working with a tin lap, I prefer the tin lap, lap for oxides. And for diamond, I prefer uh, John Rolfe's uh, bat laps. Um, so that's why the dark side's not my go-to lap, but it's there if I need it, and uh, several times I've needed it. So the next lap would be the Creamway. I need to spend some more time with the Creamway. It, it worked for me when I started, uh, and then on a stone it didn't work. So I just need to spend some time on it and I just haven't had the time to devote yet, but I'll, I'll get it able, I'll work with it and be able to, I believe, get it to work just fine. Seems to be a good lap, uh, just not my go-to lap. And the other lap that I have of the uh, Gear Loose, I guess the Gear Loose family, uh, is the, uh, the Greenway. Pretty much the same as the Creamway. It, I, it, it works sometimes. I can't quite get it to always hit the mark. So uh, that's why it's not my go-to lap. But again, I, the bat laps from John Rolfe are my go-to lap. So, uh, but I will spend some more time with the Greenway. And uh, if, if you have uh, your comments or your experiences with the Greenway or Creamway uh, or any other laps other than the ones I've mentioned, please uh, list them in the comments so that uh, we can hear from your experiences. So laps, laps, and more laps. Um, as you've seen in this video, laps can be made and are made of pretty much every metal imaginable. And matrix laps are made of many oxides and other materials. So as technology changes, new laps come out every so often. For me, I love trying out new laps. I enjoy having just the right lap in my toolbox to deal with a specific gemstone or a 
problem gemstone or a problem facet on a gemstone. But you don't need to be a lap collector like uh, I seem to be, have become. Develop your list of go-to laps and that's all you really need. In this video I've shown you the laps I have, the laps I use all the time or my go-to laps, the laps I recommend for a new cutter who's on a budget, uh, the diamond and oxide laps that uh, and, and compounds that I use with my laps, the laps that I do not recommend, and the laps that I sometimes use. So I hope you found the information useful. Uh, again, no two cutters are the same or have the same experiences. So please comment if you have a different view on go-to laps or a different opinion on laps. Your comments are useful and welcomed. And as always, happy faceting everyone. <laughs>